Out of your belly, out of your out of your Welcome to the Men of Integrity, men that rescue men and women. As always, we are delighted that you have joined us for a journey through the Word of God. I want to testify again at the end of this year that our God has been amazing. He has been wonderful. He has done things that we have not even imagined or considered. He has protected us from things that we didn't even know that was coming our way. So we give him the glory tonight. We give him the praise tonight. In it all, he is sovereign. In it all, he knows what's best for us. And we give him glory and praise tonight. Call a neighbor, call a friend, and tell him the men of integrity is on the air. And there is a word of inspiration for you tonight. Right. Our co-host, Apostle J. Edward Fisher, pastor of Saint Center, Coppers Cove, and Colleen. Well, I trust that you've had a beautiful Christmas out there because praise the name of the Lord. No matter what has happened during the year, watch this year, we did celebrate, and I trust that you celebrated the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, that hasn't changed, that will not change. And, and that's the greatest thing that we've known that's happened on earth. Um, and so um, again, uh, I trust that you've had a great Christmas and the New Year's is coming on. And we said time doesn't wait for anybody. So time just keeps moving on, but we gotta keep moving with the Lord too. Amen. I want to caution your thought tonight. And I want to wrap it around Isaiah 43 verses 18 and 19. And it says, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, meaning take notice, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. My beloved, tonight we need to consider what God is saying concerning the Word of God. We have experienced a lot. We have burdened a lot. But there is an expectation of a new thing coming in our midst. I'm believing that God is already doing it. I'm believing that God now is pulling back the curtains. He's manifesting the promises, the miracles, and the blessings that has been on your life all this time. But here is the word of God that God spoke to my spirit, that I spoke to the Rivers Ministry. He says, you have to be all in in 2020 before 2021. He says, every promise that I promise you in 2020 can still come to pass. Tonight you only have a little while before that changes. So you got to get on your prayer room, you got to get a line, you got to get in repentance, you got to do all of that over the next few hours so that the miracle that God has promised will manifest and will come to pass. He said that I will not allow 2020 to have the victory over the believer. That's enough for you to get excited about. That's enough for you to begin to say, hey, let me get on my knees right now. Let me seek the Lord right now. Mm -hmm. And let me make sure that repentance is right with God, repentance towards God, so that I can have the miracle tonight before 2021 comes in. Yeah, well, praise the name of the Lord. And um, you know, we make a lot of New Year's resolution, um, but it's not a resolution that we need, it's action. Praise yeah. the name of the Lord. And so, um, and uh, I was asking one of my nurses, I said, how long does it take to develop a habit? She told me 21 days. I said, okay, then we need to develop the right habits for, tw tw for 2021. Praise the name of the Lord. And, and that's not hard, Bishop. We just gotta keep seeking God, keep studying that word, uh, 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 and keep believing God. And um, through that, we can make it, Brent. Absolutely right. 
I believe that tonight, my brothers and sisters, we need a commitment. Mm -hmm. Apostle, we need a commitment to what the Word has already declared. Mm -hmm. We need a commitment to obedience because what I'm understanding more and more clear is that after prayer, obedience is required. All right. It is not until we obey the Word of God that we can then begin to expand on our faith and walk in obedience to the manifestation of God. Now watch the writer here in Isaiah 43 and 18. He says something here, Apostle, that is very difficult for the average person. Mm. He says, remember ye not the form of things, neither consider the things of old. Mm -hmm. Now, the Apostle Paul picked it up in oh, the yes, New Testament did. and he says, I'm forgetting those things which are behind All me. Right. Yeah? He says that I'm pressing forth, I'm looking forth, I'm trying to reach the high calling, the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. One of the things that I considered when the writer says, remember not the things of old, is because God can do whatever, mm -hmm. whenever, however. But if you start remembering how God did it, you could find yourself wrapped up in a bad situation mm -hmm. because God doesn't do things the same way all the time. All right. And so if your expectation is on the way God did it last time, you could be looking in the wrong direction for the wrong thing. But you got to have your mind knowing that what he has promised, he is able to perform it. Let me put a dot on it and you pick it up. He says in 19, he says, behold, I need you to look. He says, behold, I need you to pay attention. He says, behold, let me talk to you. I will do a new thing. And then he puts a semicolon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, of course, after that semicolon, he's building up on that. Praise the name of the Lord. He says, now it shall spring forth. Uh, shall you not know it? Pray, you're going to see it. Praise mm -hmm. the name of the Lord. You know, I, 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 I'm just digressing just a little bit. God is is moving, is moving. You can, you can see that when they were telling Jesus, Jesus was saying, follow me. And um, they say, well, I got to do this and I, I got to do that and let me go back and do that. He said, uh, no, he said, he said, I'm moving on. He said, the most important thing, watch this here, is the uh, plan of God. He said, I'm moving on. He said, let the dead bury their dead, mm -hmm. but I'm moving on. So God is moving on. And he's saying here, he said, these former things, okay, they, they, they was all right, but watch this here, but I'm still moving on. And so you got to keep up with me, praise the name of the, keep the eye, keep your eyes on the Lord. You know, um, they took the ark bishop and they made, and, and I heard that they, they, uh, when they put the ark in the front of the people, they put it a mile in the front of the people so that everybody could see it. Mm -hmm. Everybody, watch this here, even though the whole, the whole nation could see it, it's a corporate thing, but we have an individual responsibility. But they put that ark so far in the front that it was saying that even though the nation can see it, each individual has a responsibility to see it too. Absolutely, it's so important that we are filled with the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. so that we can discern spiritual things. The carnal mind cannot understand the things of God. If you can't understand what's happening, you're always locked into a mentality of why this happened, mm -hmm. okay? What made this happen? Why did it happen to me? He says, you got to forget those things and you have to focus on the next right step. You have to focus on obedience to the things of God. Now, in John 15 and 11, we've talked about this quite a bit. He says, I told you this so that my joy may be in you mm -hmm. and that your joy may be complete. He says, listen, you're not going to have the joy that you're expecting if you keep looking at the former things. All right. If you keep looking at the old things. It doesn't matter what you lost. What matters is what you have left. And so if you take what you have left and let God use what he, he has left you with, you're moving on to another place. All right. Now, let me put another dot right here in John 16 and 33. 
I talk about it a lot. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In the world you're going to have tribulation. But take heart, I've overcome the world. All right. The world here is reference to the thought patterns, the mentalities of the way things you thought should be, the things that you tried, the things that you failed in, the things that you had hope in that didn't work out. He says that's a world system. He says, listen, I need you to focus now on what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. huh? He says, don't despise small beginnings. He says, no, set your affection on things above. Mm -hmm. Now, let me put a, a, a period here and then let you jump <laughs> in on this here. Now, Psalms 37 and 5 says, if you commit your ways to the Lord and trust also in him, he will bring it to pass. So whatever is in the rear view mirror, you can't worry about that. You have to worry about doing what? Committing your ways today to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Maybe I didn't do this right. Maybe I didn't do that right. Whatever that is, let's get it right today so that God can bring the future to pass. Yeah. And, and there's no need of looking back because that's not the way you're going. That's right. You got to look, you got to uh, look and go the way that you're looking. And so, uh, uh, so Paul said, forgetting, not only, not only not remembering, but he said, really just get it out your way. He said, he said, I'm pressing on to the mark of the high calling. There is, there is more in God and more in God. And here's the thing about it is the thing about it. Somebody said, well, I can't know, Bishop. I can't know. No, no, no. God wants you to know. You understand what I'm saying? He said it in Hosea 6. He said, for I desire mercy and not sacrifice and the knowledge of God more than burnt offering. So God wants us to know, watch this here, uh, and he knows that if we know, watch this here, all of the promises and all of the things that he's provided for us, if we know that and we know how to get those things, we're going to be a better a, a, a person, a better people. God's going to be able to do more for us. But ignorance is not blessed in any realm of existence. You're absolutely right. I don't want to downplay mm -hmm the experiences that you have suffered in life. I don't want to minimize the pain, the agony, the frustration. But he did declare to us in the old writings that out of the furnace of affliction, I have called you. Mm. He says that I understand totally what you have been through. I'm a God that can be touched by your infirmities, the Hebrew writer says. He says, I understand, but I need you to take a look because I'm doing something new with you. Mm -hmm. I'm taking you to new developments. I'm taking you to new levels of faith because the level of faith that you possess now will not get you what you need up the road. Why? because I can never obey apostle what I have not fully believed. Mm. I cannot be disciplined in the things that I am not fully persuaded in. Mm. The writer says that Jesus learned obedience through the things that he suffered. All right. Eh? Meaning that there were some things that had to concrete his faith. You have been through some things. You've had some losses. You've had some disappointments. But they didn't come to destroy you. They didn't come to put you in a mental institution. All right. Now. They came to confirm the word of God in your life. Job said it best. He says, listen, though he slay me, yet will I trust him all of my appointed time. I'm going to wait till my change come. Mm -hmm. He will speak in faith. Change is coming at an appointed time. I just got to forget what has happened behind me and raise my expectation to what he has promised me. Yeah. And David picks it up and he said, I had not believed. Yes. Sir. Watch this here to see the good in the land of the living. Had I not uh, uh, waited on God. He, then he, he tells, he said, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Wait, I say on the Lord. Then James picks it up and he said, let patient have her perfect work. Yes. You understand? If you're going to listen to anybody, listen to her 
because she's going to keep you with the word of God. She's going to, watch this, shit, she's going to remind you what God can do. Praise the name of the Lord and what you should do. And so praise the name of the Lord. We're, we're, we're moving. We got to move. We got to move. Absolutely. The cloud, watch this, when the cloud moved in the wilderness, they had to move. Absolutely. <clears throat> but we cannot live in a state of depression. Come on now. No press. No. Yes, it was devastating. Yes, it was traumatizing. Yes, it was heartbreaking. Yes, mind shattering. But we serve a God that is a healer. And the question that has to be asked tonight is, will you be made whole? Mm. We totally understand the brokenness that you have experienced. We understand that it was life changing. But God says, I'm doing something new. Mm -hmm. And I need you to take notice what I'm doing. Now, look what he says in the 19th verse. It will spring forth. He says, now, if you got your eyes where they're supposed to be, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of your faith, that which is new is going to spring up. He, he says, shall you not know it? He said to you that it's going to be me. You're going to know it's me. You're going to embrace what I'm doing and what I'm doing is going to take you to a whole nother level of faith and power, glory to God, and glory, because that's how I'm manifested in the earth. Mm -hmm. And so you got to, amen, understand, you cannot allow what has already happened keep you where you are. Right. God's doing a new thing. Yeah, and uh, I hear him telling um, a Joshua, he says, now, you know, there's a time, you, Moses was a great leader, but Moses is dead, Yes. and we got to move. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we got to we, we got the promised land still ahead of us. We still, still got greater things and greater things I want to show you. And so we got to come out of those things that are trying to hold us and keep us complacent. Mm -hmm. And we got to we got to. Um, uh, well, Hebrews says, straighten up your hung down hand mm -hmm. and your weak knees, <laughs> lest you be turned out of the way. Yeah. And so we got to move. Wow. Absolutely. Look what he has promised us. Mm -hmm. He says, I will even make a way in the wilderness. Mm. You got to see the way. The revelational writer picked it up and he says, behold, I set before you an open door. Mm. It is a door that no man can shut. Mm? It's a door that no man can open. It means that at your lowest point, it means that at the most confused state in your life, when things appear to be hopeless, he says, I have made a way in the wilderness. What does that mean? Keep walking. Keep moving. Keep having expectation. This thing is not over. Glory to God. Why? Because I'm doing a new thing. Thing. New thing. And when I do it, if you got your head up, oh, I love what the psalmist said. He says, lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord the strong, Lord. <laughs> strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Be ye lifted up, your everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come come in. <laughs> That's the word of God. Man. <laughs> yeah, you know, praise the name of the Lord. I like this here. Uh, in the desert, it's dry. Yeah. In the desert, you, I mean, you probably don't know where you're at, but he said, I'm going to make a way. You're going to, and then he said, I'm going to turn the, well, with that water, he's going to turn that desert into a garden, yeah. but you got to keep going. You got you got to keep going. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? And, and 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 when you see that desert start blossoming like a garden, you know that it's got to be God. Nobody can do it but God. Man, he says to you and you got to grab this in that 20th verse. <laughs> because look what he says. Mm -hmm. Go to God. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in 
the desert. That sounds like what's your name, right? Huh? Rivers I'm of coming there. I'm coming there. <laughs> <laughs> in verse 20, he says, the rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, mm -hmm. my chosen people. You got to know who you are tonight, people. You got to know who you are. Now, let me take you somewhere. In John chapter 7 and verse 38, he says, he that believeth on me. Look what he says now. As the scripture have said, mm -hmm. not you as your neighbors and folks <laughs> down the road and all these other people. He says, you got to know me according to the Bible. Mm -hmm. You got to know me according to the scripture. And what the Bible says to you, first of all, that I am God and beside me there is no other. Mm -hmm. Hmm? He says, I'm the God of all flesh and there is nothing too hard for me to do. Come on now. And he says, I'm God and I'm not a man that I should lie. Mm -hmm. Neither should I repent whatever I said. Glory to God. It shall come to pass. He says, my word has gone out of my mouth and it shall not return unto me void. He says, you have to know that I will never leave you. I will never forsake you and I will never fail you. Until you know me as the scripture has said, healer, deliverer, provider, way maker, miracle worker, all of this stuff, you got to believe. And he says, if you do that, out of your belly, out of your spirit shall flow rivers of living waters. Man, that sounds, that sounds like a, just a wonderful, a wonderful life. And that's why Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Well, I said, he came, he did all he needed to, to, to do, but we've got to reach and grab it. Now, we got to, like you say, forget those things that are behind, press on toward the mark of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Absolutely. We got we to gotta press on. Watch this here. Okay, yes, this has happened, that has happened, but watch this here, but that's back there. Why is this here? But there's still, there is still more ground to take. There's still more promise. There's still, why is this here? God has no depth. And so we can go for eternity, but we got to go. You know, to forget those things sometimes require us to not question God mm. of why things happen and just understand that God is always in control and he always knows what's best for us. When we start questioning why God does what he does, and that's the enemy's plot, that's his ploy to try to get you to question why God did this or allow this to happen. But you can't get to that point. You have to know, just like a rocket, when a rocket takes off from NASA, when it gets to a certain altitude, it drops off part of that rocket so it is able to keep going higher and higher. There's some things that fall off of us or fall out of our lives. All right. Because we have to keep going higher to our purpose for what God has for us. Now, here is one of the keys that you got to lock into and forevermore. Mark 9 and 23, you heard me say it, I know a thousand times this year. Jesus said unto him, if thou can believe, all things are possible to him that believe it. Mm -hmm. If you can believe it, well, faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. But you got to rewind it all the way back to the very beginning of who you are and whatever it is you're trying to accomplish, in the Hebrew writings, 11 and 6, he says, he that cometh to God must first believe that God is, mm -hmm. and that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That's right. And so when you moving in the word of God, according to the word of God, he says, listen, forget what you have lost. Forget what you heard. Forget what you have felt. Now, that might not mean that it's totally wiped out of your mind. But what it does mean that it no longer have the power of oppression and depression. <laughs> it no longer has the power of putting you in the dumps. Glory to God. But you can look at it and say, look where the Lord has brought me from. Mm -hmm. You know, Paul helps us and encourages us. Uh, and you know, he went through uh, like, like uh, probably no other Christian that we know. 
but he, he compared what had, had happened. He said, these light affliction, yes. he compared them to what, was, what, it, what he's going to receive and we're going to receive. And so we got to start comparing it too. These light afflictions are but for a moment. Watch this here. But they're working for us a more great and exceeding weight of glory. The things that, are, that we see are temporal, but the things that are not seen are eternal. That's what, mm -hmm. that's, we're living in, we're living in eternity. Uh, a bishop, eternal life has begun for us as soon as we accepted Jesus, but we got to keep on. And like Colossians says, set your affections on things above and not on things on the <coughs> earth. The last part of this that I want you to grasp is this. You may have felt like you have done so much wrong you may feel like that you have fallen into so much failure and sin and, and you've done so much. God is saying, I want you to forget about that. And I want you to come to me with true repentance. And if you come to me with true repentance, I'm going to forgive you of all of your sins and all of your trespasses. And he says, I'm going to create in you a clean heart and I'm going to put in you a right spirit and I'm going to make your name great. And where your name was mud, your name was going to be glorified. Zephaniah chapter three tells us this. And so what God wants you to do is forget about all of the crazy that you've done and all of that. And he says, I'm doing a new thing now. And if you want to be a part of that new thing, hmm. then you got to come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden. He says, I'll give you rest. I'll take that yoke up off you and I'll put my yoke up on you and you can learn of me. Mm -hmm. And this is how your new life and beginning is going to take place. Well, I like about this year, he tells us not to remember those former things, but then God says, and I will remember your sin come no on. more. Come on. <laughs> come so on. God's not going to be stuck in, in, the, in the path with you, he's going on. Praise the name of the Lord. And so he wants to, and then he's going to make you white as snow. You won't even know that there was a, a, a smudge or uh, 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 some type of uh, black mark. And so God doesn't tell us to do things that he doesn't do. And so uh, it makes no difference what the devil says. God doesn't remember it. You know, that, <laughs> that is so powerful because he never asks us to do things that he does not do. That's right. Listen, my beloved, you only have a few more hours to repent, to realign yourself, and to get all in in 2020. Mm. You don't want to wait to 2021. You want to be all in in 2020 because God wants you to walk into this new season, into this new realm of life, already in the right standings with him. We are the men of integrity. We're praying for your miracle. Hope to see you in the service soon. God bless. How do you bear your, your share of love?